Well, upon his 50th year of the Draconian Gun Control Act of, in New Jersey, which is required in New Jersey firearms ID card, otherwise known as this, um, the, the SIL Law of, this guy's name was Sills, I think it was, uh, Sills Law of 1966. Now, I live in the free states, the free states being the South Confederacy. Um, I probably will move up uh, to a northern part of my country, which would be northern Tennessee in the mountains maybe some point in time. But, you know, maybe not right now, but I do live in the south, actually the southern port, part of our great confederacy. That's the way I look at it. It's not even the same country uh, up north as it is down here. I can tell you that right now. It's not perfect down here in the confederate states, but it's a hell of a lot more freedoms than what was up north. You know, okay, we lost the tax revolt of 1861, but, hey, we still retained a lot of our freedoms, even though we got stuck in the Union, right? Now, I want to put out something else here for uh, a little bit of food for thought. Uh, it's used for the preservation of firearms ownership. Actually, I've been a uh, member of them since the early 90s. Um, I wasn't a member for a while because they were going to get taken over for possibly by the Second Amendment of Foundation and got leave, and I was like, eh. But they haven't been, so now I'm a member now again for two years. Also a member of the INRA, and I've been a member of Gun Owners of um, owners of America. I actually support them more than the NRA. I'll probably be a lifetime member pretty soon. And um, they, I've been a member of them forever, you know, consistently. So, uh, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, um, they did a lot of great research. Um, and I mentioned in other videos, and here, this is actually from one of my other videos. I was talking about something. This is like, I had these books from way back when, when they first came out, Lethal Laws. Gun control is the key to genocide. You first have to have gun control in place before you have a genocide. And also, gun control gateway to tyranny. The Nazi weapons law of 1938 is enshrined in um, the, the, the 1968 Gun Control Act of the USA. Now, one thing that really tips you off big time that um, the Nazi Gun Control Act of 1968 is, uh, 1938 is enshrined in U.S. law in 1968 is the Sporting Purposes Clause. And this was introduced by uh, Senator Thomas Dodds. He had a copy of the bill. I mean, the whole 1968 Gun Control Act isn't verbatim off of Nazi law, but large parts of it, and they introduced this thing called Sporting Purposes Clause, or Sporting Purposes Clause. They, the Second Amendment was founded upon, you know, securing rights for individuals. It had nothing to do with sporting purposes. It wasn't like, you know, there wasn't an amendment that you could ride horses or go kayaking or, or you know, at that time you wouldn't have to fly a plane, but skateboarding or anything like that. It was no kind of amendment like that. It was it had nothing to do with sporting purposes. It had to actually do to securing the, the rights of people. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe that there could be a genocide in Germany. Now, today we got other things coming out where this probably looks like the government itself is involved in nefarious plots behind the scenes. And you know what? The government's always involved in gun control, all the time. The powers that be use the government as their tool of force. That's what it is. And um, even this law, this SIL law, this guy SIL or SILS, he was a big-time supporter of Thomas Dodd, who later introduced the Gun Control Act in 1968. Now, um, now the one thing I want to emphasize on this video, because I go through these pages, I'm going to go through like when were, the uh, New Jersey f um, gun owners were contesting the law. Um, I got all the original documents. I'm going to go over some of the things. But one thing I'm going to highlight on this video is that sporting purposes now, that is a concept that's alien to the Founding Fathers. It's nothing to do with sporting purposes. If we even had no Second Amendment, you have an inherent right to defend yourself, to exist. You have the right to life. You have, you have also a moral obligation to protect innocent life. Um, there's been, that's why you have a gun. It's not like, oh, the police, that's their job. Uh, you know what? Obviously, the police have been used many times in New York City and New Jersey as tools of the political power. I pointed this out on the civil rights video I just did. Uh, it, you know, it was, you know, blue, abuse of police power. And, you know, some cops got killed, mainly after many people that were in the civil rights movement were killed and beaten and for no reason. You know, I mean, there was a lot of excessive force. Once some cops got killed, they moved to freaking um, 
uh, register all firearms, uh, cause a, uh, nice, uh, a New Jersey firearms ID card, and set of fingerprints, a mental check, a background check, and also a criminal background check. Now, some of the cops were against it strictly due to paperwork. But here I want to tell you, the sporting purposes has no foundation in American law at all. It started coming out in New Jersey, and this sole guy that was brought out the law in New Jersey in 1966, he was a big-time supporter of Thomas Dodd. Thomas Dodd, Senator Thomas Dodd, yeah, he was an anti-communist, but, you know, what does that really mean? It doesn't necessarily mean he was, like, not a fascist. You know, the fascists were anti-communists too, right? And he had, he had an actual copy of the Nazi Gun Control Act in 1938, and uh, the Nazi Weapons Law of, of March 1938 is actually the proper title. He had a copy of it to Senator Thomas Dodd of Connecticut at that time in the 60s, and he had it translated to English. He used a lot of that law for the National um, Firearms Act of 19, Gun Control Act of 1968, but it was also put in New Jersey law before that. So now here I want to actually... Here's where the uh, uh, New Jersey gun owners are contesting the law. Now, like I said, there's absolutely no um, precedent for sporting purposes. You know, it says in here, the governor in his fourth annual message to the legislator wants to preserve the right of sportsmen, see, and law-abiding citizens to own firearms for legitimate purposes. There's no legitimate purposes law uh, phrase in American law prior to this. These are all Nazi concepts. And Jews beware. Jews beware. I don't know if how safe America is going to be because, you know, I read a lot of stories about, you know, uh, refugees, quote unquote, coming and being brought into Pennsylvania clandestinely. You know, it's going to be an explosion one time in New Jersey that is going to you know, just rock the boat and the foundations of the place and they'll bring down more draconian laws because there's a game going on. Conflict produces change. Now again, I want to bring up this sportsman stuff. You know, it talks about Mr. Chairman, the reason I ask this question is that I will take it to the main thrust of your argument against this particular bill is that you believe it restricts the sportsmen of our state and I got the impression that from reading the particular comment, see, he's talking about, they're arguing from the point of sportsmen. Ah, you already lost the argument when you freaking start it that way. You already lost. It doesn't have crap to do with it. And, you know, they could say, oh, you're scared, you're this. But, you know, in California at that time, they worked very hard, to, and at that time, they worked very hard to pass a paramilitary bill, bill. When it got all done, they couldn't find any groups to, that it could apply to. In other words, the government was paranoid about paramilitary forces, and um, you know that's the kind of that's what they're afraid of actually in New Jersey too. People may be fighting for their rights. People right vain fight against the corrupt rigged system. You know how these people get appointed. You know how many times you know, I could tell you one, I don't even want to say exactly, but you know, there's a guy I, I heard of very, from, from family. He, uh, he's retired. He's making loads of money. He worked for the state. He, uh, he, he works, he goes in part-time. He gets like $700 a day. He doesn't do anything. And he brags about it. So, I mean, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, I mean, if people protest, then the cops come down really hard, and then maybe it's not the cops, but they're they're the arm of the political power, the crooks. And maybe, and you know, if the cops don't like it doing that, they'll get weeded out. That's what happens. Maybe they don't like all the crap they got to do, but they'll do it. So what do you do, man? I mean, that's really what you know. Our country was founded upon giving the power to the people. The government works for us. We don't work for the government government doesn't grant us rights and that's a Bernie Sanders concept that's not my concept so it goes on here it says I had complaints from people who live in Newark New Jersey who had their summer homes at the shore and they, they couldn't carry their pistols from Newark down to the shore because they have it in New Jersey where you have to be going to a hunting place because that's a legitimate purpose or you have to be going target shooting because that's a legitimate purpose. Or if you're carrying a weapon in your car, you're going to a gunsmith.
because the gunsmith is going to fix the gun or put sights on it, new sights on it, or fix it, do something. Like, so you can't just take the gun to someplace else, your vacation home, because that's not a legitimate purpose, because theoretically it looks like, well, it doesn't look like theoretically, they're implying that you only have a right to a weapon because of sporting purposes. A Nazi concept. So it goes on, they desire to get their permits for this. They had to get permit to freaking take their gun to another summer home. And they couldn't get the permits because the permits are um, may issue, not shall issue. They might issue them if they feel like it. If it's paperwork, they don't want to do it. And we thought we would assist the sportsmen by including the word pistol in there well, as well as defined as, as rifle to make it positive. Pos- Positive that they held the right to carry the pistols to and from target practice, and that, of course, it, you know, it's like, you know, sportsmen, you blew it, you blew the argument, man. This is when they were arguing this law. They're arguing it from the, you know, the problem is, oh, they, there's some more. I'll get onto it in a second here. I'm sorry, but you know, I didn't go over this whole thing. I just only took off snippets because I could be here for hours. I went, I spent a lot of hours looking at this shit. And I said I decided to concentrate on this sportsman stuff. But because the people that have the guns, they're arguing from the the standpoint of sporting purposes. They already lost the argument. If we should be deceived into thinking that we can solve the crime problem by inferring with the right of law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms, we are being directed into a tortured pathway, which will eventually lead to the elimination of our shooting sports. (coughs) You know what I mean? What the hell? They're afraid about their shooting sports. They're not, you know, they don't. They're not arguing. We have the right to self-defense. It's an inherent right. It's in nature. You know, they could have went back to the Magna Carta for crying out loud. You know, could have went back before that. I mean, Alexander's army. Well, I mean, I don't know. You know, Alexander the Great. I mean, I'd argue it. Shit. God. What's the matter with these guys? And you know what the problem is? I might be good at this stuff and like more forthright, but if I get out there and stick my neck out, there'll be a, you know 150 yo-yos out there just sitting around with the dumb up their ass because it does, they don't give a shit until something happens with them. You see, I'm the type that gets out there and it's almost like you can't have it that way because you know when you're gonna charge them, you gotta have you gotta have some numbers. That's the problem. Even the NRA's got supposedly four and a half million, five million arm numbers, which represents a small proportion of the gun owners. The NRA itself is compromising way too much, in my opinion. That's why I wasn't a member of them for a while. I'm a, I was always a member of Gun Owners of America. They're about 300,000 strong. Uh, JF, JPFO, it was early on when they freaking started. I thought they were going to get taken over by the Second Amendment Foundation. I go, I got out of that shit. But they didn't, so I went back with them for a couple of years. That's cool. Uh, as long as this good old rabbi running a place, not that Gottlieb asshole. But anyway, so here we have another thing, snippet about those, of course, who are interested in the pursuit of any sport, whether it be hunting or fishing or golf or tennis or anything, skiing or whatever, it may be he who is in a position to purchase the equipment necessary to pursue this sport but could not conceivably object to the payment of a $2. You see, sport. What the hell does I have to do with that? Well, you know what? You don't need a permit to get any, you know, buy a football. Okay? <laughs> you can play it that way. But a gun can hurt you. Exactly. That's why we got them, damn it. <laughs> That's why we got them, you freaking yo-yos. Why do cops have guns? Why do military have guns? To protect the power. Why do the people need guns? To protect the people. Hey, That's simple. Right? Anyway, uh, the requirement that we provide the state police with a list of our members annually is retained. <laughs> they, keep, they keep list of all the clubs. Now, actually, I'm going to get on to the juiciest thing on the end of here. Like, I know I'm going to try to be fast with this. I go along on my videos. But my, my ending on here is going to be pretty juicy. Uh, the junior's parents will probably advise their sons and daughters to become involved in a sport other than shooting because of general feeling it is against any register you know you know they're trying to discourage you know whatever I mean you know I mean I guess it, 
you got to remember the reason the military knows how to outshoot the, our military knows how to outshoot other military. You know why? Because people went in there were trained. They don't shoot that much in the military, man. The ammo costs money. Freaking people were shooting ever guns and stuff since they were like 12, four, I don't know, 14 years old. They go in the military. They already know this stuff. That's why we kicked ass. That's the other thing. It's the government's not paying for the self-defense. As a matter of fact, they ought to downsize the military and encourage far more people to own weapons. The exact kind that the military has. And train and work out. Yeah, you'll lower your blood le levels of sugar and cholesterol and all that wonderful shit. What I, at the same time, and be healthy and combat heart disease because you might have to do some military training as a civilian. What the hell, man? I, you know, and it, you'll cut the cost in your damn tax bill, right? That's cool. Sporting purposes? No, it's to defend the nation. But you know what? It's, it's to defend the nation because we, the people, are the nation. We don't work for the government. The government works for us. Go on here. It says, uh, I am speaking as a member of the Legislative Committee of the Camp Fire Club of America, a national conservation and sportsmen's organization that has devoted our seven decades to the preservation of both our country's natural beauties and citizens' heritage. See, another game with the sportsmen. The Campfire Club has always been great interest to all legislation affecting the use, purchase, and ownership of sporting firearms. Sporting firearms? You want know, firearms that can freaking kick some ass because you, the people, need the power. It ain't for sporting. Um... I am speaking as a member of the Legislative Committee of the Fire Camp Club of America, a national conservation and sportsman's organization has de devoted over... Yeah, I thought I did that. Let's see. Yeah, anyway, uh, we heard it said that this committee, this assembly, couldn't care less for the sportsman or the right of... New York, you know, eh, sportsman? Sportsman, huh? Okay. We have nothing against sportsmen, they go. Yeah, great. Sportsmen. I don't give a shit if you don't like this sport. It's your problem if you don't like to, You don't like to have a gun? Fine. You don't want to have a gun? Fine. I'll have a gun. You don't? Fine. Good. You know? Go try to rob my house, you asshole. Anyway, I would say a majority of my members belong to sportsmen's clubs. We have nothing against sportsmen, and we feel that the what sportsmen should have nothing against law enforcement. Well, I do have something against law enforcement. If they're going to make you freaking uh, go by a bunch of damn rules that they have none of their damn business with. You know, I mean, they got other laws. They got a, Their laws have nothing to... Their, their function has nothing to do with gun ownership. Period. You know what? If a guy's a crook... You know what? In my opinion, if the guy was a felon 12 times and he did his time, he should be able to just walk down the store and buy the gun. You know... If the guy's not rehabilitated or some shit, well, if he did his time, he did his time. Fuck it. You know, I don't care. If somebody does domestic disputes, that's one thing now they got. Domestic dispute, you're forever banned from having a firearm. I don't know who pushed that shit. Hopefully it wasn't the NRA, but you know, I look at that, that's ludicrous, man. What, are you kidding me? What, are you kidding me? So what? I mean, if you have a domestic dispute, you know, <laughs> you can put a pill, you know, say you're a guy, right, and you're just First off, if you're that bad, the, the woman ain't going to want to live with you anyway, right? And if she does, she's a glutton for punishment. So if you don't have a gun, you can, you're can, probably going to whip her or something. I don't know what you're going to do, right? And if you want to kill her, you put a pillow over her head. You do that, something like that. Say, hey, she died in her sleep. She had this, with that sleep, whatever that sleep, whatever that thing is when they choke when they sleep. Uh, that's what happened, you know? <laughs> Why would you even use a gun? I mean, you know, it's ludicrous. So somebody beat their wife up, or the wife beat the guy up, you know, sometimes it's the other way around, it's women that work out, hey, so what, so, you know, shit happens once in a while, right, I've never done it, happen that never happened to me, but I I'm in sympathy with these people, I mean, somebody, somebody had a bag of weed, somebody made some meth or some shit, who cares, right, I mean, come on, you know, what's this shit, felony, everything's a felony today, for crying out loud, Mr. Chairman, my name is James Anderson, and I'm an attorney with the offices of Union City in Hudson County, where the smog is. I am also a lifelong shooter and sportsman, and for this reason, I feel I have a perhaps better qualified than the average layman to express my opinion on the problems with resolve around firearms legislation. Yeah, the problem is, you don't need it. <laughs> That's what it is. I, I tell you the truth, if a guy, you know, if the guy had a freaking, uh, you know, got got out of prison for 20 years for manslaughter, and uh, I don't know, 
that's what his time was, 20 years or whatever the fuck it was, he should just be able to walk down and get a gun. Screw it. That's what I look at. Because if he wants to kill somebody, he's going to kill somebody anyway. There's a gazillion ways to just kill somebody. You don't need a gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't need a gun to do that. You need a gun to actually uh, defend yourself. You don't, need a, you don't need a gun to kill somebody just randomly. A gun is actually one of the stupidest ways to kill somebody randomly. You know, you could be, you know, they, they got kids that go up on these buildings and also on these bridges and they throw a rock down. That's why they get these fences that are like 15 feet high and shit on these bridges that overpass that go over highways. You can kill somebody like that just for the hell of it, right? People don't do it, though, but once in a while it happens. But you see, if they want to kill somebody randomly, which that's the whole premise of this gun stuff, you can kill somebody easy. You can go on top of the, you know, Chrysler Building, Empire State Building, Freedom Tower, throw a brick off the side and kill somebody. You know? It's easy, right? You go stick poison in water. I mean, you do all kinds of shit. You go down a... I don't know, go down to the freaking, put stuff in food and whatever. You know, I don't want to give people ideas, but you know what I mean. What the hell? I mean, gun, gun goes boom real loud. There's blood. You freaking figure it out. Other things you wouldn't know. So, anyway, in our state, see, the gun you needed to defend yourself against a big guy that's bigger than you or like if you're a woman, right? You know, you can shoot him in the cojones if he's trying to rape you, right? In our state, as of most, in most states, driving an automobile is not an absolute right. It is a privilege. So you can see where they're going with this stupid argument. I think no one can deny that certainly a firearm is equally as dangerous as an automobile, right? If not more so than an automobile. So why then should a sportsman take a reasonable and logical view, not admit that... See, the problem is with this equation is... First off, a woman's getting raped. She can't go in her car and say, asshole, you're trying to rape me. I want you to get in front of my car so I can run you over. Don't work like that. That's why she needs a pistola, baby. You know? I should have strung these... You know, if I was there, I would have freaking... Eh. I might have been Gettysburg charged and I would have lost. But you know what? That's what it would have literally been. I ain't... You know, I'm, I, I get seething mad when I think about New Jersey. I thought when I left that state... For the last time, I felt like I was up there for visiting. I felt like you scumhole. I hope you blow up and sit on fire. Hara and then here's the other thing goes uh, about harassment of sportsmen. I feel that the bill should contain a provision protecting sportsmen, sportsmen from repeated returns to the police department. See, the cops freaking didn't like the law mainly because it was extra paperwork. And some of the cops honestly said it was bullshit. Why the hell do you need to fingerprint people with a gun? You know, it's like. What the hell are you doing that shit for? You know, some. I mean, I love some of the cops were cool. Not all of them. My, actually, my dad was a cop for a while too. But he's real honest, man. And I, I can tell you, he knew a lot. He, I think he didn't want to be a cop after a while because he realized a lot of shit was. But he was extremely honest. Most honest cop in New Jersey, Passaic County, New Jersey. He was the most honest cop in New Jersey. My dad. That's no shit. He was an MP. Uh, in Korean War, and uh, he was honest as shit. If all the cops were like that up there, we wouldn't have this bullshit. I'll tell you that right now. Well, I'd go on and say, here we go, a little more. I'm almost done. Got a few more pages, but I'm going to give it to the clincher at the end. I think that we have simply covered and considered my examination of the bill. I want to thank the committee for its time, and I want to thank my fellow sportsmen. <laughs> God. Anyway... My sportsman. I shall confirm my remarks in the areas covered by this bill that primarily affects sportsmen and their <laughs> Nazi concept, right? That's what we got, right? We got sporting purposes. Legitimate use. Uh, what else is there? Target shooting. Legitimate use, right? Yeah, legitimate use is uh, when you, Tammany Hall tries to freaking rip off all the citizens. You just shoot them. Shoot up Tammany Hall. Subject. The sportsmen <laughs> who only want to go hunting f to unreasonable requirements. See, they're, argu they're arguing the sportsmen who want to go hunting for uh, being subject to unreasonable. Reasonable? Hey, no argument. You don't deserve this. And here's here's the clincher. And this tells you the whole deal. Why you even have arms? This this and this is where I'm done. I'm finishing up here. 
This bill is a menace to many grounds to every civilian man and to every civilian. It's not just the business of the sportsman. It's not just the business of the sportsman. It is our feeling that the committee, it's just saying it's a menace to every citizen, right? It's not just the business of the sportsman. He's implying that it's the business of everybody, which is true. It is our feeling that your committee should know that every member of the Citizens Committee on Firearms Legislation has been the subject of police investigation. Is that coming out on the bottom there? Hopefully it is. Police investigation. So the powers that be that wanted to push this law through, they were looking for anything on people that were voicing their opinion against the law in a, you know, a, you know, an honest way through the court system. They were subject to police investigation. And that inherently tells you why all citizens need to have guns, not just to protect from criminals, but protect from the political system that is corrupt as all hell and extremely corrupt in the northeast. And yeah, it's in the south too. They got many versions of all this bullshit down south. So anyway, that's my update. And uh, this is about, yeah, so since this law came into being, uh, the National Firearms ID Card of 1966 with the SIL law, whatever the hell is, SIL Gun Control Act. This jackass SIL was cover, was uh, uh, supporting Senator Thomas Dodd. He's the one who introduced the, had the, 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 the Nazi weapons law of March 1938. He had it translated into English. He enshrined good portions of that law, almost verbatim, in American law in the Gun Control Act of 1968. And they are also talking about, oh, about snipers and JFK, and we all know Levy Har of y'all's weld did not, not kill JFK. He was killed by people within the government itself. He wasn't killed by the lone gunman. See, that was another thing they were pushing his laws for, too. Besides the civil rights people and the cops not liking the fact that some of the civil rights people had guns, and they wanted the cops to want to be able to just beat them and shoot them at will, right? When they were they didn't like it when somebody was like, you know, some some blacks going on a civil rights march got shot by cops or something like that. They didn't like the fact that they fought back. They didn't like that. Just like with Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall in 1911 with Big Tim Sullivan. Uh, he had the gangs working for him. They didn't like, he didn't like when the gangs were trying to pressure people at the polls. Um, and some of the people were fighting back against the gangs. They didn't like that. He didn't like that. So he passed the Sullivan Law in 1911 in New York about all the pistols and stuff. And they also had laws like that in Philadelphia that were passed and also later on in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Northeast is corrupt as shit. The South is somewhat corrupt, too. It is corrupt, but it's not to the level of the Northeast. Well, there's your update. I want to give you some history on it. If you want to argue this stuff, go actually go with... Uh, I, I, probably, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really give the NRA some shit a little bit, but I'm going to try to steer them in the right direction. I am first going to be a life member of Gun Owners of America. I've been, I should have been one because I've been there, been a member for more than 20 years at least. And I've been in the NRA many, many years. Just like recent years I got off from them because I was getting a little disgusted with their compromising. When I says, man, it ain't going to be as bad as Hillary Clinton and blatant communism. And uh, would you see what happens when you compromise in New Jersey? <coughs> they were compromising right from the beginning. So what happened? <coughs> they got screwed, right? See what happens when you compromise? JPFO is a no-compromise organization. Anyway, that's my update. Hopefully you got something out of it because hopefully it give you some good ideas to we can uh, fight him back. And like I said, not too many people are going to fight him. It's not just about the Second Amendment. It's about genocides that happened across this planet. The only time you ever had a genocide, you first had to have gun control in, in place. <clears throat> that was even mentioned in this uh, in his court hearing about the Nazis and what they did in Austria in 1938-39. The Nazi weapons law of March 1938, that's what Senator Dodd, Thomas Dodd had. He had it enshrined in our law in 1968. So... You gotta fight them. You gotta fight them, and you gotta fight them. And uh, they're bringing in terrorists in this country on purpose, under the guise of refugees, to create more problems. And 
just like they created problems with, oh, they, yeah, they killed, you know, who who killed JFK? Who killed Bobby Kennedy? Who killed Martin Luther King? Some lone gunman? Oh, bullshit. That's what they make it look like. Don't tell me it's a conspiracy theory. Because I can tell you in the case with Lee Harvey Oswald, his voice recognition stuff, which they didn't have back then, the computerized voice recognition for telling if you have a stress in your voice, whether you're telling the truth or not, total pass. For totally, he said he didn't kill him. He was, he was telling the truth. They checked him for any kind of firearms uh, powder residue. He didn't have any of that on him. None. Then later on, E. Howard Hunt said he was one of the shooters. That's one of the guys, but there's other guys. There were several shooters. That warrant commission with the single bullet theory was asinine. So, who killed Kennedy? The government, the powers behind the government didn't want a freaking populist president that was for the people that's why we the people have the guns it's quite obvious what's going on the last step before we die and get killed take the weapons away and that's what Hillary's about and uh, Bill Clinton and even Bernie Sanders man not as bad as Hillary but he's uh, he's got the idea that government takes care of us and permits us what to do that's not the deal baby that's not the deal you work for us that's too bad well there you go that's my update